Hello all, my name is Ashutosh Rastogi. I am a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education for all. For that purpose, I am creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, today in this particular lecture, we will going to discuss about CDMA encoding and decoding process. So these are the outlines. We will going to start up with the introduction. Then we will briefly describe about code division multiple access. Then we will going to discuss what are orthogonal codes, what are the specific features of orthogonal codes. Then we will going to discuss CDMA encoding as well as decoding example. Then we will going to look up another example which will going to describe CDMA encoding and decoding process. And finally we will going to conclude via some intuitive discussions over the capacity where we will compare between FDMA and CDMA. So in a wireless environment where most of the mobile users are trying to transmit their signal, it is difficult to provide the interference free transmissions. Obviously, if in a wireless environment multiple users are trying to get the access of the common link in order to transmit their information, then anyhow multiple user signals will going to overlap with each other. So obviously interference will going to happen. So how can we provide interference free transmission among the multiple users present in the common channel. So the solution is multiple access techniques. So in our earlier lecture, we have already discussed about different contention free multiple access techniques such as your FDMA, TDMA, CDMA and SDMA. So now we are going to start up with the brief overview about code division multiple access. So a number of stations share a number of channels. So here we are signifying stations at different as different number of users. Each station transmits over the entire spectrum all the time but are not garbled. So obviously each user will going to transmit their transmission over the entire spectrum but then also their information signal will not going to collide with each other or interference will not going to affect them. Multiple simultaneous transmissions are separated using the coding theory. So when in the common medium all users data are combined so it's receiver responsibility to get its own information from this combined data. So this multiple simultaneous transmissions would have been separated with the help of coding theory. So there exist some assumptions in the coding theory. So what is a specific assumption about the coding theory is all the signals will going to add linearly. So this particular figure is showing the overall structure of code division multiple access environment. We have mentioned that we can divide our channel into different signal dimensions in order to avoid the interference and those dimensions are your time frequency as well as code. So from this figure it is quite clear that we have divided our channel in terms of different codes. So I mean channel 1 is having different code, channel 2 is having different code, channel 3 is having different code and similarly up to n channel all the users will going to have different codes but keep in mind that all of all of them will going to use the same frequency as well as the time slot. So here one should keep in mind that in this spread spectrum multiple access technique each of the station or you could say that each of the individual user would have been assigned a unique PN code which are orthogonal to each other. So the key idea in the CDMA system is if multiple users are exploiting orthogonal codes to encode their information then their signal will not going to garble up although they will going to interfere with each other. So basically coding theory provides us the basis to fetch the information signal back from the interfered noise like signal. So now we are going to discuss orthogonal codes since they are very important and we had already discussed that if multiple users are going to use orthogonal codes then, all, then only their information signal will not going to garble and with the help of coding theory we are in a state to separate individual users information signal back from that interfered signal. So each station has unique ambit chipping code S or S bar. Since CDMA system is the example of your direct sequence spread spectrum systems where we are actually using M bit chipping code in order to encode any user's data. So here also each user is having the M bit chipping codes which would have been designated as S or S bar and S and S bar nothing but they are the combination of ones and zeros. So here this S bar is representing the complement of S. So point is any user can have the unique chipping sequence code 
that is s or its complement so bipolar notation in bipolar notation we will going to represent our coded sequence as binary 0 would have been represented by minus 1 and binary 1 would have been represented as plus 1 so the two specific codes or chips that is here we are signifying as s and t they are representing two different chips they are orthogonal if and only if the product of s and t will be equal to 0 and how this product s into t would have been defined as it is the inner scalar product and it has been defined as s into t is equal to 1 over m summation starts from i starts from 1 to m si into ti so here individual terms will get multiplied with each other and when we're going to take the sum over a time period then that inner scalar product will be equal to 0 if they are orthogonal to each other please keep in mind that inner product multiplication of same code will going to gives us 1 and the inner product of individual code and its complement will going to give us minus 1 since we had already described that s is notifying any chipping sequence and s bar is representing its complement so another important point to note that is s dot t will be equal to 0 or you could say that the inner product of s and t bar here t bar is representing the complement of another user's chipping sequence code t that will also equal to 0 obviously if s is not equal to t if we want to provide certain summary about the orthogonal codes then we can define orthogonal codes such as we will basically going to multiply these codes element by element and then we will going to take up the sum over the specified time interval and that summation would lead to equal to zero in that case we will going to say that these codes are orthogonal to each other so now this particular figure is showing the cdma encoding process so here we will be having four different users user 1 user 2 user 3 and user 4 and they will be having data bits that they want to transmit user 1 is having the data bit d1 and user 2 is having the data bit d2 user 3 is having the data bit d3 and in the similar manner user 4 is having the data bit d4 in the similar manner all these users user 1 user 2 user 3 and user 4 having their own chipping sequence which would have been designated as c1 c2 c3 and c4 respectively so how they will going to encode their own information with the help of their own chipping sequence is they will dif different they will going to multiply their data bits with its with their own chipping sequence so all these users will going to apply the same process user one's encoded data would have been represented as d1 c1 and users two encoded data would have been represented as d2 dot c2 in the similar manner user 3's data would have been represented as d3 c3 and user 4's data would have been represented as d4 times of c4 so in the common medium we will be having the combined form of all users data as d1 c1 plus d2 c2 plus d3 c3 plus d4 c4 since we have already assumed that all users data will going to add up linearly so this is what we mean by linear combination or linear addition so in common medium we will be having this amount of information present and at the receiving side all the individual receivers will going to get this same amount of data and with the help of this data they must have to decode their information sequence so this particular slide is showing the chipping sequence of different users such as user 1 user 2 user 3 and user 4 so the chipping sequence of user 1 would have been denoted as c1 and the value of c1 will be, will be uh, would have been given as plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 all are plus 1 whereas the chipping sequence c2 would have been given as plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and in the similar manner chipping sequence of user 3 would have been given by this and the chipping sequence of user 4 would have been given by this specific chipping bits so here data bit 0 would have been represented as minus 1 and data bit 1 would have been represented as 1 since we had already mentioned that we are using polar schemes and one should keep in mind that silence or if user doesn't have any information bit to transmit then that silence would have been represented with this 0 so this is actually the data representation in cdma so this is how we will going to represent the data in cdma so this particular slide is showing that how we will going to share the common medium so here all these stations or users user 1 user 2 user 3 and user 4 
will be having their own data bit that they want to transmit that is user 1 is having 0 bit to transmit whereas user 2 is also having 0 bit to transmit user 3 is silent or it doesn't have any data to transmit whereas user 4 is having 1 bit to transmit so obviously all those users will going to encode their information with their own chipping sequence which would have been designated as c1 is the chipping sequence of user 1 c2 which is given as plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 it is the pn sequence of user 2 and in the similar manner user 3 is having chipping code plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and user 4 is having the chipping sequence as plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 so all of them will going to encode their information with their own chipping sequence so as we had already mentioned that for bit 0 we will going to represent them with minus 1 so what will going to happen is we just simply going to multiply and we will going to get the information about d1 times of c1 so when this minus 1 will get multiplied with this plus 1 we will be having minus 1 in the similar manner since all chipping sequences is having plus 1 when we will going to multiply it with minus 1 so the value of c1 d1 turns out to be minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 so in the similar manner we will going to evaluate d2 times of c2 and you will get this particular outcome that is minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and plus 1 then user 3's data would have been given as d3 times of c3 since it is silent or it is not at all transmitting any amount of information so when 0 will get multiplied with this chipping coded sequence we will be having this 0 0 0 0 as user 3's information and in the similar manner user 4's data whose data bit is plus 1 its encoded information would have been represented as plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 so since we had already specified that all those data will going to add up linearly so in the common medium we will going to have this much amount of data that is your minus 1 minus 1 minus 3 plus 1 so how we have actually get it so we just simply added up individual encoded bits of each user that is user 1's first encoded bit that is your minus 1 then it will get added up with user 2's first encoded bit that is again your minus 1 user 3's first encoded bit that is 0 plus user 4's first encoded bit that is your plus 1 so this minus 1 minus 1 that is your minus 2 again 0 that will equal to minus 2 and plus 1 we will getting this minus 1 then again second bit minus 1 plus 1 that is your 0 this is your 0 and this is again your minus 1 then in the third minus 1 minus 1 that is your minus 2 this is your 0 and this is again minus 1 so that turns out to be minus 3 and the similar manner minus 1 plus with this plus 1 that is your 0 0 and this plus 1 so this is how we have evaluated this composite signal that would have been present in the common medium so that is given as minus 1 minus 1 minus 3 and plus 1 so at the receiving side basically all the users that is user 1 user 2 user 3 and user 4 will going to get this amount of information only and all these users will try to evaluate their own information data with the help of their own chipping sequences so whatever we have studied in our last slide let us understand it with the help of certain figures so user 1 is having bit 0 and its encoded bits would have been given as minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 so this would have been represented by this particular figure that is your minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 so all of them is having the same amplitude and they are lying in the negative part in the similar manner user 2 is again having bit 0 and its encoded sequence that is your c2 d2 would have been given as minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 so with the help of graph we can represent them as minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 in the similar manner user 3 is silent or it doesn't have any data so that is why its encoded information would have been represented by this particular blank line in the similar manner user 4's encoded information would have been given as plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 so that is your plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and plus 1 so what this black color figure is actually showing is it is showing the combination of all those encoded bit sequences that are present in the common medium you can just check out this timeline that is 
we just only need to check out it, this overlapping region that is this particular region that is your minus one this is again that is your minus one so the summation of minus one and minus one that is your minus two and this plus one so net outcome of all these stuff would have been turns out to be minus one then again in the second timing portion we will be having this minus one plus one that turns out to be zero this is again zero and this is your minus one so in the second timing sequence we will be again going to have this minus one whereas in the third timing sequence this is representing your minus one this is again your minus one minus one minus one that is your minus two this is your zero again the net composite outcome of these three would turns out to be minus two and this again minus one so we will going to have this minus three and in the similar manner we will be having this plus one so this black color figure is actually showing that what we will going to have in our common medium so now this particular slide is showing that how we will going to decode our information so obviously in the common medium we will be having this much amount of information that is your minus one minus one minus three and plus one so this particular information is present in the common medium and all the individual users will try to obtain their own information with this amount of information only so obviously in this particular slide we had only shown how second station will going to decode its own information station 2's chipping code would have been given as plus one minus one plus one and minus one so this would have been represented by this particular figure that is your plus one minus one plus one minus one again what they will going to do is they will again going to find out inner product of its own chipping sequence with the common information that is present in the common medium so what we're going to have is the inner product of this first duration is minus one into plus one we'll be having this minus one then again minus one into minus one we will be having this your plus one then again minus three into plus one we'll be having again minus three and then again plus one and minus one we'll be having this minus one so when we will going to add up this complete combined information that is your minus one plus one minus three and minus one so this minus one and this plus one that turns out to be zero minus three and minus one that turns out to be minus four so when we will going to sum all those values we going to we will going to obtain this minus four and when we will going to take the average out or we will going to divide in the number of chipping bits that turns out to be minus four by four that turns out to be minus one so which is indicating bit zero now we can conclude that the station two's transmitted information bit was bit zero so this is how this decoding process will going to take place so now we're going to discuss another example of your cdma so here also once again i am describing all the assumptions again so here assumptions are all stations are perfectly synchronous that means there exists complete synchronization about their signal transmission all codes are pairwise orthogonal that is all the users that are transmitting their information they are using orthogonal codes so assume that if two or more stations transmit simultaneously the bipolar signals adds up linearly so this is we had already discussed that our assumption is all the signals will going to adds up linearly so suppose in this particular example we'll be taking three number of users user one's chipping sequence would have been represented as this your plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus so basically this plus is representing plus one and this minus is representing minus one so in short we have signified like this so second user's chipping sequence would have been given as plus plus minus 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 plus plus minus so that is your plus one plus one minus one minus one minus one plus one plus one and again minus one so this t is signifying second user's code whereas this u signifying third user's code that is your plus one minus one minus one plus one minus one minus one plus one and plus one so all these s t and u they are signifying certain orthogonal codes and what do we mean by pairwise orthogonal is when we're going to take up this s and t they are orthogonal to each other t and u they are also orthogonal to each other and when we will going to take the pair of s and u they are also orthogonal to each other so this is what we mean by pairwise orthogonal so all these code coded sequences are orthogonal to each other so now let us take the example that all three users are transmitting 
their information with the help of these coded sequences that is your s t and u these are basically your chipping sequences and all three users is transmitting the data bit as plus one when all of them will going to transmit simultaneously the receiver will going to receive this particular information that is r is equal to s plus t plus u so since they are linearly added up so what will be the value of s plus t plus u will be equal to that is your plus 3 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 3 and minus 1 so again we have get this information by linearly adding all these s t and u data sequences that is your plus 1 plus 1 and plus 1 we get this plus 3 minus 1 plus 1 and minus 1 again we get this minus 1 and this is your plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 again we get this minus 1 and in the similar manner we have obtained this much amount of information in the common medium so this is basically signifying value r so now to decode the received signal r for sender s one need to calculate the normalized inner product so we haven't mentioned about normalized inner product so basically by normalization we mean that we just have to divide the complete inner product with the number of chipping bits so r dot s would have been obtained as plus 3 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 3 and minus 1 this is basically representing your received information signal it will get multiplied with this s chipping sequence code or spn code that is your plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 so each and individual data bits will get multiplied with each other that is plus 1 into plus 3 that is your plus 3 minus 1 into minus 1 that is your plus 1 minus 1 into plus 1 that is your minus 1 then again minus 1 into minus 1 will be having this plus 1 then again minus 1 with this plus 1 will be having this minus 1 then again minus 1 with this minus 1 will be having plus 1 plus 3 and plus 1 will be having this plus 3 and this again minus 1 multiplied with minus 1 will be having plus 1 so when we're going to add up we're going to get the outcome as 8 and for normalization since we are using 8 number of chip bits in order to encode a single bit so that is why we have divided by this m or we could say that here the value of m will be equal to 8 so we have divided it by 8 so we will going to obtain as 1 so this is what users once data or s data is that is it has transmitted one so do we get this by accident or there exist certain specific conditions so again r dot s would have been represented as s plus t plus u since it is representing r's data into s so what we will going to obtain is s dot s plus t dot s plus u dot s so since we had already mentioned that the inner product of the orthogonal codes with itself will going to produce one and the inner product of two orthogonal codes or we could say or two diff with two different orthogonal codes the inner product of two, two different orthogonal codes will going to gives us zero so that turns out to be one plus zero plus zero that is equal to one so this is not that we got it by accident this is the basis of coding theory so with the orthogonal codes we can safely decode the original signals so this is how we can encode as well as decode in cdm so now we will going to do an intuitive discussions over the capacity so obviously in terms of capacity wise we are only comparing with cdma and fdma so since cdma is a form of spread spectrum multiple access techniques so instead of sending b number of bits per second what we are actually sending is we are sending m times of b number of chips per second using the entire spectrum so this is what we had already discussed that in cdma we are using entire spectrum and for encoding a data bit we are using chipping sequences so we here we are assuming an example that the channel bandwidth would have been given as 1 megahertz and 100 different number of users are exploiting this 1 megahertz band so this is our assumption and with this particular parameter we will try to evaluate the capacity of cdma and fdma so if we take the case of fdma each station of 10 kilohertz band so obviously if the complete bandwidth available to us is your 1 megahertz and 100 different users are utilizing them 
so in fdma we will going to divide the complete frequency band as we had already discussed so when 1 megahertz band would have been equally divided among 100 number of users so individual user will going to get this 10 kilohertz band and if we assume that for transmitting one bit we are using one hertz of frequency then maximum supportable data rate that is possible with this 10 kilohertz bandwidth is 10 kilobits per second so this is what we could achieve with the help of fdma systems so in contrast with fdma if we will going to compare with your cdma so here each station uses the whole 1 megahertz band each and every users will going to have this bandwidth to transmit their own information so less than 100 number of chips per channel more than 10 kilobits per second data rate is possible so what do we mean by this particular statement is if individual users in any case if any users chipping data or chipping sequences is less than 100 chips per user then obviously in all the cases more than 10 kilobits per second data rate would have been possible so in that essence we could say that as long as we are utilizing lesser than 100 number of chips per user the data rate of cdma is much superior in comparison to your fdma or we could say that the capacity of cdma is much higher in comparison to your fdma so hopefully you will get the idea about the encoding and decoding process of cdma in case of any doubt you can ask me in the comment section i will try to solve them as soon as possible these are the references thank you very much for your patient hearing